please see a deacon or you can talk to me after the church service. Um, we do um, have Day Glories coming up, and we're still getting organized and ready. We've got Day Glories uh, meeting this morning following the service. That's right next door in the parlor. Um, so please uh, take note of that. I also wanted to bring to your attention that on Saturday, June 26th, the high school and college students uh, have an opportunity to go to the Forge, which sounds like an amazing place. I haven't been there yet, so I'll have to check that out. But it's an outdoor adventure park, and if anyone's interested, there's information in the bulletin, so please check that out. Um, then it looks like on Sunday, June 27th, there's the first planning for the next Women's Spiritual Growth Gathering. Wow, what a busy church. This is awesome. So there's uh, another good thing to look forward to. So uh, please RSVP with Dorothy Hamby, and there's information of contact information is in the bulletin as well. So uh, with that, I'm going to pause and now invite Todd Hicks to come forward, who wants to share or has a few other announcements that he would like to share with us now. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, lots going on in this place, whether you know it or not. <laughs> um, first off, I want to congratulate Reverend Daly on his new calling, uh, which will be starting July 18th, so there'll be no downtime for him. He won't get the summer off. I hate to see him with nothing to do. So, congratulations. <laughs> uh, second, membership directory has been updated, and it is now found on the church website under members. Uh, password will be sent out later this week via constant contact. If you don't get constant contact, please reach out to the church office later in the week and Kim can provide you that information. Uh, let's see. The constant contact for the pastoral search survey. Uh, please, if you did not get that, you can get a uh, paper copy. Uh, but if you did get that, please put it on your list, get it done, get it returned. They've asked to have it done next week. Hopefully you're not like me, because I'll say yes, I'll get it done, and I never do. So once you see it, do it. It takes literally five or ten minutes at the most, depending on how much input you want to put in there. Um, and I finished mine last night, by the way. Uh, service videos. So I want to apologize for last week's service recording. I've emailed and spoken with many members of the church this week concerning that recording. I want to apologize for Reverend Morales for the oversight of not having you mic it was a very good sermon. I had to listen very closely, um, but I did get it. Uh, you will notice this week we are trying different camera positions. Everyone will be on a microphone and or a wireless mic. There are already plans in place for changes in next week's service as well. Now you ask, why are you doing this, Todd? Well, we're looking at various options of things to do, so I apologize. Um, but we are meeting with audiovisual companies, uh, addressing various different issues. And unfortunately, I can't create this event on a Wednesday night. I can't imagine somebody walking in front of a camera because they're a few minutes late, or the people, Dan, having a conversation next to the camera in the day. So I apologize for last week's sermon. We've got everybody mic'd. This should be a better uh, spoken sermon. I don't know what the visual is going to look like, but please bear with us. We're going to do this for a couple weeks and see what happens so that I can then use that data to talk to audiovisual companies and address concerns and uh, items from there. Uh, finally, on that subject, I want to ask for your prayers for me because as soon as this is put on the website, I have to listen to Reverend Daly's jokes again. <laughs> Uh, Reverend Daly mentioned the QR code. Uh, if you're not in the QR code, you can go directly to the church website. I don't know if you said that or not. Um, and worst case, I'm going to throw Don under the bus, but talk to Don out there if you're interested in volunteering to read sermons. Scripture. Scripture. Is that good? <laughs> hey, we, we, got, we got four weeks and we can do sermons too. <laughs> Uh, lastly, uh, diaconate. Uh, the diaconate board is in need of other people. Um, many members have volunteered to help run this Sunday service, but diaconate does more than just Sunday service. And I appreciate everybody's willingness to, to step up and help. Um, but our board is a skeleton crew right now, so we are looking for people. Uh, if you're interested, please reach out to me. If not, I may be calling you anyway. So let's just make this easy for both of us. So thank you for your time today. Enjoy the service.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Please rise if you're able and join us in our first opening hymn, number 517, verses 1, 2, and 4. Say good morning to our neighbor and share Christ's love with one another. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, children of God. It's so good to see everyone here. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite those children that are here today, and even you youth, to be daring and come on up and join me. I've set up these little hearts that I'm hoping that you'll pick up once you sit down. Come on up. <laughs> Welcome. It's so good. Everyone's got such a great tan, great start to the summer. Grab a heart and sit down, and we'll talk about it in a little while. It's good to see you in person, guys. Welcome. Over here, Dakota, this is a nice one. Good to see each and every one of you. So, all of us have a favorite look. And what I mean by that is an outward look, an appearance. Some of us, it's a suit. Some of us, it's a special shirt. We all take lots of pride in the way we look. Do any of you have like a special look you like? Any of you want to find? Yes, Macy? Um, I really like, like fashion look, like a pop look. Awesome, a fashion pop look. Very good. What about you, Joe? An athletic look. Great, great. So you see, these are looks that show our outward appearance, right? The way we look outward wise. How about you? Anyone else have a special look you like? Well, believe it or not, as important as it is, now for the 
the summer, probably one of your favorite looks is the goggle look, right? With goggles, ready to throw yourself in the water. What do you say? Does that sound like a good one? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, besides looking good outward, God really is interested in our heart. How, what, what is inside of us. And today we're going to even learn a story from the Bible that talks a little bit more about that. But what's in our hearts is so important because no matter how we look in the outside, what's in our heart is what God looks at. And today in Sunday School, we're going to talk about that as God has Samuel reach out and find David from the Old Testament. But keeping that along, take your heart and lift it up. And can some of you read, if not all of you, what it says? Macy, you want to start? Can you read what you're saying? Say it loud, Macy. How we, how we treat others. Very good. How we treat others. Is that true? Yes, that's an inward way, right? Celia, you want to share yours? God looks to see how we respect our parents. Our parents. Yes, God looks to see how we respect our parents. What about you, Farah? God looks to see how we treat animals. How we treat animals. Yes. Charlie? others. So these are all inward, right? They're from inside of us. doesn't matter what we look like, but these are things that God looks for. How about you? Are you comfortable sharing yours? God looks to see how we treat earth. How we treat earth. Wow. Ooh, the, team, the guru team is here, so <laughs> the green team. Do you want to read yours? Jacoba, can I read it for you? Thank you, dear one. Thank you. God looks to see how we use our talents. Kind of what Mr. Hicks was talking about with the deacons, right? All right, let us, yes, one more thought. Go for it, Macy. How we treat our talents is something that we Whoa, yes, you're sharing your talents today with this, uh, this body of Christ. Way to go. Let's pray before we go to Sunday school. What do you say? Join me. Papa Dios, thank you for this day. Thank you for our church. Thank you for the season of summer. Help us always remember that you are looking at what's in our hearts. Amen.
At this time, let us gather our hearts for prayer. God of love, we thank you for this new day and this beautiful morning. For whether sun shines or rain falls, we are nourished by all that you give. Your love is endless and it is relentless. As yesterday has left us, this new day finds us. So Lord, we ask that you make us new, inspire our growth and help us to be strong. Once again, we thank you, God, because in you, even a tiny bit of faith thrives. Plant your love within our hearts so that out of darkness comes light. Out of despair comes everlasting joy. Out of the crucifixions of our daily lives comes the promise of resurrection. We pray for your forgiveness and ask for your spirit to send us a vision of new life and lead us deeper into your kingdom. God of faithfulness and joy, we are grateful for the release of COVID restrictions. We are grateful for pride celebrations. We are grateful for summer vacation for students and teachers and families. We thank you for those special people in our lives, those ones who listen so generously and laugh spontaneously to make us feel good and centered. We thank you for family and friends who faithfully care for us as we seek to work out the meaning of our own lives. God of compassion, we pray for those who suffer, worry, and fear. We pray for those we name in our hearts and for those known only to you. May your seeds of love, healing, and hope fall onto the dry, lonely places of all your people. May we unconditionally serve others and care unselfishly for ourselves however we can. Let us not use our inadequacy, indecision, or interruptions as an excuse to nurturing each other to fullness and wholeness. May our good thoughts pass into prayers. May our prayers pass into love. For that is the source and the path of your power and peace. Through the ministry of your Son, enable us to proclaim your saving deeds to all the world.
Scripture reading this morning is from Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Parable of the Mustard Seed Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Thank you, Don. And I can't promise you that maybe the sound will be better, but let's not think that the sermon is going to be better. <laughs> And the subject of today's message, as you can gather, is seed, or seeds. And I want you to know that my daughters have been um, avid planters for many years now, and um, we've been planting seeds all winter long, and uh, we've got our garden in, and I found that um, I wanted to get in on the action and kind of utilize their gifts and talents, so I handed my daughter Phoebe a handful of seeds, and I said, would you mind planting these uh, in our garden this year? Do you have any room out there for these seeds to grow. They're very special seeds, and she took them, and she looked at them, and she said, Dad, these are jelly beans. <laughs> and I said, well, where else do jelly beans come from? <laughs> Todd, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I'm still trying to find the answer. So, well, let us gather around that idea that any seed is a special seed. Let us know that there is so much potential in just such a small amount of anything that comes from God. So will you please join me in prayer? Lord, we pause to feel your presence with us as we open ourselves to your word. In Christ's name, amen. I actually um, want to begin uh, this is uh, such an enjoyable entry into the bulletin today that I, I thought it would be really appropriate to actually share this um, poem that Jean submitted, and it's in the bulletin. So Jean, thanks again for sharing your, your gift of poetry and words with us. So I'm going to take a moment to use uh, this as our way of gathering this morning for a uh, sermon meditation. So this is entitled Friends. And when I think of friends, I think of, of the many ways that uh, friends work in our lives that we don't even maybe recognize, but it's always there. So let us reflect on these beautiful words. Friends, I think that God will never send a gift more precious than a friend, a friend who always understands and fills each need as it demands whose loyalty will stand the test when skies are bright or overcast, who sees the faults that merit blame and keeps on loving just the same, who does far more than she needs to to be a friend and keep us true. Now earthly gifts enjoyment lend, but only God can give a friend. Thank you, Jean. That is beautiful. Well, I was born in the 60s, but 
but I've been told that back in the 60s, there was something that was very popular. It was a sign of piety back then, a small, round, clear glass globe about the size of a pearl, and inside the clear glass, right there in the middle, was a little spot that was reported to be a mustard seed. These were worn as charm bracelets, keychains, or necklaces, and they were a sign of a person's identification with the Christian faith. In the 60s, they would have been seen a lot, and I imagine a lot like those Live Strong type bracelets that we're accustomed to seeing nowadays. Now, I'm not sure if that little speck was a mustard seed, I imagine it was, but whether or not that little ornament stood for something. It stood for people who were making a statement about their faith in Christ. Today's parable represents the kingdom of God. It speaks to God's presence, just like a friend. And this is a parable that is familiar to all of us. It conveys how God's kingdom is a nurturing environment with a community that generates faith. And it's important to make this note. A person who sows a seed is an integral part of the story. However, the sower is not exclusively responsible for the results. The earth plays a role, the context and community in which a seed grows plays a role. Growth comes as it interacts with the elements around it. Jesus implies a trust factor. Faith, when started, will grow and grow strong. So don't worry. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell this parable. And in some ways they're similar, but yet in other ways they are very different. And I confess, when Jesus implies that if you have faith like a mustard seed, nothing is impossible, I still have a little trouble by that statement or that the concept of that. Maybe you have a similar kind of wondering. Is Jesus being critical of his disciples or is he encouraging them? In one version, he says that if you have faith of a mustard seed, you can move a mulberry tree. The more familiar line is that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move Mountains. I have not noticed any mountains moving lately, especially here in the Midwest. But um, there is something powerful about that image. I doubt if the disciples have literally seen any mountains moving. So it is, it's hard to tell whether or not Jesus is being critical of their lack of faith or if something else is going on here. One way to hear this is if no mountains have been moved, and if it only takes a tiny bit of faith, like a tiny mustard seed, to move a mountain, maybe your faith is even smaller than that. But that doesn't sound like Jesus to me. And I imagine it doesn't sound much like Jesus to you either. There is another way to understand this. And I've read that in the original Greek of the New Testament, the conditional phrase, if then, has a dual meaning. So you cannot tell precisely, unless you know the context or the intention of the speaker, which of the two meanings is intended. One meaning is the one that which we normally think of, right? If something is present, then something else will happen, if then. But there's another way in which the original Greek used these kinds of conditional phrases. They sometimes use them assuming the presence of the condition so that it might have been better translated, since you have faith like a mustard seed, then great things will happen. Unfortunately, we can't know for sure which Jesus really meant. He may have meant the statement as a criticism of the tiny, tiny nature of people's faith, or he may have meant the statement as an affirmation that even small faith, even faith like yours and mine, can do mighty things. Maybe he meant both. There is another problem that I think we have with these parables, as familiar and beloved as they are. That is that we know that mountains do not move, or so it seems. The text invites us 
to believe that if we have enough faith, if we just pray hard enough, if we just believe and wish and want badly enough that we can get almost anything done, our experience of that tells us that even though we wish and pray for things, they do not always happen. So I don't think Jesus means that just wanting something bad enough or praying for something hard enough is going to guarantee that this mighty thing is going to take place. Remember, that is not what the kingdom of God is about. Rather, I think Jesus is inviting us to consider the kind of power the kind of ways in which force, forces can be brought into harmony when our faith and God's will are marching in the same direction. I may have faith that I'm going to win the lottery. I may have even bigger faith than a mustard seed that I will win the big jackpot, but that is not going to happen. There is something else going on. Where there is this synergy of power that moves mulberry trees or mountains, where there is this great intersection that makes a difference, is when the will of God in our faith march in harmony. When even faith as small as a mustard seed can do incredible things. When it comes to measuring our faith, our ordinary, everyday, common faith, we know that faith does move those monumental challenges and conditions that seem to block our faith and the growth of our faith. Mountains can be moved. Take time to think about a typical week in your own life, looking for mountains, or at least mulberry trees, being moved, seeing the ways in which our common, ordinary, not heroic faith is still doing some amazing things that are even heroic and brave and true and mighty. When our faith and God's will collide, anything can happen. So don't ever doubt that Christ is here. Don't ever doubt that you do have faith, at least the size of a mustard seed. It is within you. Don't ever doubt that mulberry trees and mountains get moved around all the time. And remember that this little vignette from Jesus' life started out with that beautiful phrase, this is what the kingdom of God is like. This is what the kingdom of God is like. Leave here this day imagining how much mustard seed faith is getting done and imagine what can happen next. Imagine what would happen among us if the seed to be Jesus' disciples were to take root all around the world, along with right here in our own neighborhood. It takes a planted seed for growth to be possible. When we sow a seed of faith, as small as it may seem, and spread it as indiscriminately and as extravagantly the way God spreads love and grace, we can expect wonders. So have faith in the seed. Amen. Well, at this time, I invite us to share our response by sharing our gifts with God. And at this time, I also invite Macy to come up and uh, share this very special offertory. So, are you going to introduce it for us, Macy? Thank you. Hi, my name is Macy. I'm from Dallas, Georgia, and I'm going to be performing Iron Fist Kata.
I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, accept our gifts of time, talent, and treasure as evidence of our desire to participate with you in the care of your beloved creation. These gifts symbolize our thanksgiving for all that you provide. Through these gifts, we praise you. In Christ's name, amen. Please remain standing if you are able and join us for our closing Number 556, Trust and Obey, verses 1, 2, and 4. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the afflicted. Honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Together, let us all say, Amen.